their system of continually growing their wealth. So on all these places, this is um, basically standard of living. Um, it's, also, it's called the um, UN Development Report, quartiles. So the darker it is, the better um, that, that country's living conditions are. Look at Africa. On all the places in Africa, where do you see the darkest, the most high standard of living? Uganda. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's Libya. That's Libya. Out of, so Libya uh, had a revolution, and King Idris was knocked out of power, and King Id and Gaddafi came into power, and you can see he was part of the Free Officers Movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Gaddafi government nationalized oil fields, stripping the Western countries of their profit from those oil fields. They took no IMF <laughs> loans. They they had actually hundred. They weren't in debt by slavery. Most of the world's had held in debt. You and I are held in debt. And once we're in debt, we have to work all the time, and they have control over our lives. And Libya took none. They actually, yeah, like I said, 150 <laughs> billions of dollars, which is now frozen globally, uh, of their actual profit. They had education. They had health care. It was all by the government. They paid 14 cents a liter uh, for a gallon of uh, gas. And actually, a, a percentage of each gas that they sold globally went into the accounts of each Libyan person. This is the country. You're talking about um, it, 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 20% higher literacy rate than Egypt, which we give the third amount of aid to. This is why we attacked Libya. They demonized and bombed Libya because Western power didn't dominate it. It wasn't, it wasn't providing an example on how to flourish without colonialism. It was perfect. Libya by no means, was Libya perfect? By no means. But we're talking about millions of men and women and dying. It's, a, it's more than a tragedy. It's, a, it's outrageous. Uh, Africa, are, they're starving. People are starving to death over there. And then we have the audacity to bomb the, the, the best country. Because the people who are in charge of this country, it's, not, it's by design. It's, it's completely by design. And... They don't care because they care about human rights of, of, of the Libyan people. Garbage. Garbage. Absolute garbage. And, and you know, they, they come out and they talk at us and people believe it. And, um, people, right. you know, and we got to know we have to be educated and we have to take our minds back because this is the way they do it all over the place. Uh, Santiago can talk about uh, Pinochet, uh, Pinochet, who was a dictator, and Allende was democratically ele elected in Chile. And then he nationalized the largest uh, copper mines, which was money for the Westerners. So what did they do? They ripped him out of power, and they put into power a dictator. That's what they do. How Europe developed, underdeveloped Africa. So basically, I want to make a point that just like we don't need the police, uh, we, they don't need, uh, we don't, we don't, okay, anyway. How Europe Underdeveloped Africa is a book written by Walter Rodney, who was assassinated. He shows how Africa was deliberately exploited and underdeveloped by European colonial regimes. It wasn't that Africa needed European to progress. It was, it, they, they had the most advanced civilizations in the world. Europe just wanted the land and the resources and power and influence to get more land and resources. <sighs> that is what empire is for plunder, riches, life of opulence for the rulers. The African need, didn't need to become slaves. The wealthy wanted cheap labor. The bosses need us. We don't need them. The rulers need us. We don't need them. If we didn't live in a huge inequality of wealth, where everyone, if we had lived in a place where everyone had enough, there wasn't the mega rich and the super poor, if we spent our resources as a people on prioritizing life of the things that we need out here for opportunity, for education, there wouldn't be a need for police. There wouldn't be. Police only are necessary in a society when there's an extreme wealth gap, when there's like extreme inequality, and when people want to come out and make the changes, who comes out and slams on their door? Who comes out and puts them in jail? It's the police. When, when, when people like Libya have the audacity to nationalize their oil wells, who comes in there to knock them out of the box, to make them into dire poverty like the rest of Africa, like they That's want right. to? Um, they're, they're actually, they're not legitimate anywhere they are. They're actually a disease. They're not necessary. They're a disease. Pe yeah, they're a cancer. Like people here in, in America had great established societies. They didn't need colonialism. They, it, colonialism was a disease for them. Same with Africa. Same with us. We don't need them. We don't need them. They're actually a disease. Um, this is from Michael Parente. Throughout history, there's only been one thing the ruling class has ever wanted, and that is everything. Every ruling class <laughs> has only wanted this. All the rewards and none of its burdens. There is an option, they have an operational code. It is, we have a lot, we can get more, we want it all. 
And if you don't know that, you're in a sad place. But if you know that and you don't know anything else, you know more than if you don't know everything else and you know that. They will stop at nothing in the name of empire and profit. They kill millions and deliberately for their ends. They spend, why do they spend billions on repression of us? Study our movements, jail us, kill our leaders, miseducate us, drug us, keep us divided, keep us too busy with work and other distractions, co probably come to this t night t to talk, to listen to this, because we are powerful. We are the sleeping giant. They may have all the technology in the world, power positions, wealth, machinery, land, but what they lack is heart, nerve, and soul, and love. And that's what we have. And that's what the colonies had here that beat the English Empire. That's what had Vietnam beat the U.S. That's what had Cuba not stay a colony. That's what shook the world during the Arab Spring. That's what Harriet Tubman had when she was freeing slaves. That we are capable of anything if we understand the power we possess. Their whole empire depends on our allegiance. We do all the labor. We fight all the wars. We produce all the wealth. We mine all the resources, including our mines. We police ourselves. We collect our taxes. We, they need an ex our land and our minds for ever-expanding markets and territories so they can exploit. Although the deck of cards rests on us, we are at the base, we do everything. What do we get for being this essential part of the system? Do we get education, health care, safety, meaningful work, housing, food? No. Again, we create it and then it's stolen from us because we work against our self-interest. Because we have been miseducated, misinformed, undereducated, manipulated, and forced. In the words of Grace Llewellyn, who wrote a book called uh, 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 The Teenager's Liberation Handbook, um, how strange and self-defeating a supposedly free country should train its youth for life in totalitarianism. This is how we're taught in school. We're taught for life in totalitarianism. We're not taught how to think. We're not taught how to uh, work in actual democracy. Uh, we break our bracks to... For a, a, structure in a, uh, a structure in a society that victimizes and exploits us, we identify more with the system than those who actually benefit from the system. The rich don't kill for this system. They don't work like slaves for this system. They don't constantly like, have to be in misery for this system. They don't live poor for this system. They live in opulence. We are the ones who kill for this system to live in a horrible place. It is said... And then you can hear people say, oh, well, it's still the best place to live. Oh, what would Iraqis do if we left? Well, you, if, you can't, if you don't have everything mapped out, <coughs> if you don't have the change you want right in front of us, you don't have the answer right now, then we, we, we can't go ahead for some change. It isn't that bad. Uh, Qaddafi was a really bad guy, though. Uh, where can you live that's better than here? Would you rather live in the third world? Look at how bad a place that is. Be thankful for what you got. Uh, well, this is why I say we need to divorce ourselves from identifying with oppression and the oppression of the world. Stop giving, stop identifying with the oppressor. Uh, stop giving a legitimacy in our minds. Uh, stop, you know, just because we don't have enough imagination, because we can't imagine a better world, that we, you know, we continue to buy into the system. They're not legitimate in any of their wars. That includes the ones waged on the poor and the women and people of color, workers, and the environment here. They are here legitimate in uh, over the thousand military bases around the world, and they're not legitimate in the military base down here in Connecticut. The president, the Congress, Wall Street aren't legitimate. When I started the talk, I said I'm not a politician, a Democrat, or a Republican, nor do I consider myself an American, because I don't. I mean, I don't identify with being an American or any other nation state. I'm a human being living on Earth. America didn't even exist 350 years ago. The name of it came from one of two either ex wealthy, explorers or an Englishman who funded a wealthy explorer and they were looking for lands to expand their capital not to help people. The Continental Congress here in America was the basis for this country that it was the, the Constitution was written there were 55 people all white all males all were rich all only two of them were not employers all owned lots of land and the majority owned slaves they said slavery was legal, and they proceeded to continue to commit genocide on indigenous people of this land. <coughs> Only people who could vote were white men with lots of property. So women, indigenous people, non-rich white males, slaves, and everyone else but the smallest minority of this continent could vote. And they called it democracy. And that is the basis of our democracy today. Yeah. And there, already, there was already strong, amazing cultures here that had democracy, that were living in balance with the earth, yeah. that did not need this civilization and this progress. So I, so I know who my real enemy is. I'm not going to 
I'm not going to identify with being American so they can divide me and make it seem like national security is in my best interest. I know who my real enemy is. They steal my wealth. They, pro they pollute my land. They brutalize me in the street. They bomb my brothers and sisters across the world. Anyone who does those actions are my enemy, no matter what they identify as. Iraqis, Libyans, Muslims are not my enemy. I have more in common with everyday people around the world than the ruling class Americans. Yeah. When the US, Russia, and China, or Korea, or the UK talk about nuclear war, that should be alarm for all humanity. That we need to unite as soon as possible to knock these megalomaniac warmongers out of control before they destroy us all. Now we live on a planet, and this is a small planet, and we all live here together. And it's basically, there's no choice in that matter. And we can begin to see how selfish interest of the 1% can, is, is going to destroy the planet. BP oil, uh, these executives, uh, Fukushima, those was for the private wealth of the few. The priority there was profit and easy. And the effect and the destruction came on the poor people. That's how it, that's how it always happens. The profit for the wealthy and the destruction of our communities. So the main reason, and so we have, we have to come together to make to understand that it's it's not like uh, it's 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 an 